Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. The time has finally come for me to add my permanent uh, spoil board to my O's Nest Workbee Z1 Plus CNC. Now, I normally don't do things straightforward and again this is not going to be the, your typical spoil board. So I have a few ideas that I'm going to implement on this that's going to suit my needs and whether you have an O's Nest Workbee or a different CNC, you may find some things in this video that may be useful on your spile board on your CNC too. So let me explain a little bit better. So a normal spile board is just one piece of MDF cut to the size of the machine and screwed down to the machine. Now this machine is 1500 by 1500. Now the recommended spile board size for this is actually 1500 by 1360. So you can make the spile board one solid piece out of an 8x4 sheet because that's only 2 meters 440 by 1 meter 220. So you're going to either have to go look for a 5 foot sheet of MDF or you're going to have to put a joint in the spile board someplace. So I didn't really like that idea so I decided to think about it a little bit and I have decided for a couple of reasons to actually make the spoil board in three sections. So there'll be three segments of MDF that'll all be the same, so they're going to be interchangeable. And it means that I'm going to be concentrating on the working area that is 1270 by 1270. So that's the area that I want to cover with the spoil board. I can still go to 1360 or 1370 wide but I'm only concerned about 1270 in the depth. So what this means is I can actually make the spoil board out of a four foot sheet or a 1220 mil sheet of MDF. So I'll be making three sections, 1370 by 400. Now I will be putting a fixture down to, that'll actually spread those out a little bit, but that'll all become apparent as the video goes on. Another reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of the time when you're using small parts on the machine, you're doing most of the work to the front of the machine. So the front part of the spoil board is getting way more damaged or cuts into it than you would at the back of the machine or even in the middle of the machine. So by doing it this way, that if I need to replace the front section, I only have to replace a section 400 millimeters wide, not the full sheet of MDF. Or I can actually move the one from the back to the front so that I have a clean piece at the front again for the smaller projects that I might be working on. Another thing that I'm going to be doing incorporating into this spoil board is I'm actually going to be lowering the spoil board down on the machine to increase my Z height, but I won't be interfering with the fact that I can still let a longer piece of material pass through the machine. So I will be dropping the spoil board down in the machine, but I won't actually be dropping it lower than the front framework of the machine. So I can still pass through a six or an eight foot sheet of stuff to do some machine on it. But like I said, all this will become apparent the more the video goes on. So here I have the three pieces of 18mm MDF I'm going to be using to make the spoil board. These are cut 1370 long by 400 wide. Now the first thing I want to do with these is I want to actually add some holes and recesses for to use some 6mm T-nuts. I'm going to be adding 48 T-nuts to each section and I'm also going to be adding 4 T-nuts at the very ends of these but that's going to be outside the machine limit so I'm going to have to turn them around to do that on the end. Now because I have a lot to cover in this video I don't want the video to, to go on for too long. I'm not going to cover how I designed uh, the T-nut holes and stuff like that in this design software in this video but I will add another video where I will run through from start to finish how I designed all aspects of this spoil board using Vetric Aspire and that'll be the T-nut holes, the grid pattern and even a surface and tool path so that we can get this dead level once the whole thing is completed. So I'm going to move on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now and we'll come back and we'll be setting up to actually cut the T-nuts. 
So with the G code done for the cutout for the T nuts in the segment of the spoil board, the next thing I want to do is just position it on the CNC to cut those out. Now, I want to be able to do the three of these exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it and I'm going to add some blocks just so that when I go to position the next one, it'll all position in exactly the same place. So to do this, I already have a grid groove in the temporary spoil board. So I'm just going to line up this piece with that groove. Like that. And I'm just going to attach two blocks to the front edge so that when I do the next one, it'll all line up again. So now the next ones, I can just drop them in and let it up to them blocks, and I know that it's going to be the same as this one. I also want to raise up this piece so I'm going to raise it up on three little bits of uh, three mil plywood. That's so that when I cut through the holes, I'm not actually going to be cutting this spoil board. So it's just giving me that little bit of room. And the last thing is what I want to do is position it from side to side. So I actually have a 22 and a half mil gap to the frame of the machine on both sides. So I just cut a little block, 22 millimeters, so that I can just position that in there and slide it up against it like that, so that I know that the next ones, if I do the same, they're all positioned exactly the same place. What that means is I don't have to keep setting my datum point for each piece. So now I just need to screw it down, and for that I'm going to use just little blocks of timber with a little rebate in it and a screw and I'm going to put three of those on the front and the back edge. And that is going to hold it in position. So now all I need to do is just set my date and position to the center. I have done that by just drawing a line from corner to corner to find that some point. To set the XY date and position, I'm going to use a 30 degree V bit and I'm just going to be able to position that right over the crosshair of the X. And when I've that done then, I'm going to change the bit to a quarter inch up cut and I'm going to set the X off the top of the material and then it's just a case of running the program.
So with the holes done for the T-nuts in the three main pieces of the spoil board, I have now turned it around so that I can do the four in each end of the spoil board that I couldn't do because they were outside the limits of the machine. I have again added a couple of blocks so that I can line the next one up and this one and I have a clamp down in three places. And I am now setting the X, Y and Z datum to this corner. I no longer need to work in the middle because I have a corner that I can work off of. So now it's just a case of doing the four of these in both ends of all three sections. So with all the T-nut holes cut, I just run the sander over them to knock off all the fuzzies and a little sandy pad. So the next thing I want to do before I actually spend the time to put, insert all of the T-nuts is I want to address the way that I'm going to hold this down to the machine. Now, like I said, I'm making this out three pieces. The working area of the machine is 1270 by 1270. But these are cut 400, so 400, 400 and 400 is 1200, so that's leaving me a little bit shy of the 1270. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a piece in between the pieces of MDF that's going to space the pieces of MDF apart and it's also going to hold them down to the CNC. So I'll just bring you in a bit closer and I'll show you what I'm planning on doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four strips to hold these down. Now these are 27 millimeters wide and 14 millimeters thick. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put a six by seven mil rebate in the bottom corners of this piece. And then I am going to remove material here to leave a six by seven tongue on the bottom of the spoil board. I have these spoil boards turned up the correct way now uh, on the machine just for the demonstration. So I'll be removing this material and this material there and there. So this will then sit down between both. This will catch it here. And when I screw down through this, it's going to hold all this down to the machine. I also allowed for the fact that I was taking six mil of a rebate out of both sides of the sections of spoil board when I was doing the design for the T-nuts and the grid lines and all. And so I was making these to be 388, not as if they were 400. So I had already allowed for that when I was doing the design. So I could cut these out on a table saw or you could use a router to do them out. Now, I have a spindle molder, so that's what I'm going to use, but just because you mightn't have a spindle molder don't mean to say that you're not going to be able to remove those little bits of material. Like I said, you could do it with a router, just with a straight fence and a straight bit, or a guy bare and guided rebating bit, whichever you can remove that material.
So with the rebates done, now hopefully you can see that that is going to sit down there and hold both of those in place while also spacing them apart. Now the reason that this is only 14 millimeters is it gives me four mil of clearance to surface the spoil board without actually interfering with this slip. So that's the reason why it's not 18 mil, it's only 14. So now let's move on to the boring task of tapping in all of the T-nuts. So these are the M6 prong T-nuts that I'm going to be using in the spoil board. And the one thing I just wanted to cover before I actually started tapping all these in is when I created the tool path for the cut these out, I measured the T-nut and as you can see, the T-nut is seven mil. So it needs to have a seven mil hole to sit in. Now the one thing that people be complaining about these the whole time is they become loose and they fall out and people find it difficult to get them to stay in place. Some people will even tell you to glue them in place. I don't do that. I've been using these for a lot of years in different things. What I do is I just make sure that I have the hole tight. So this is measuring seven mil. I've made the hole 6.75 mil. It's only a quarter of a millimetre smaller, but that makes a huge difference in keeping these tight and stopping them from falling back out. So to install these, I just normally just put them in place and give them a few whacks of the hammer. But because I have the recess in the way that these are going to be below the face of the wood, you find it hard to hit it with the hammer because it'll be hitting the MDF. I just use an old impact socket that I have that's the right size for the top of the T-nut and then I can just send it home finally. So now it's recessed below and it is going to be square and tight. That's not going to fall out on its own accord. So I only have 55 more to put into this one and then the other two as well. So 168 T-nuts later, I now have the three sections of the spoil board completed. So the next thing I need to do is move on and start prepping the CNC for the next step in installing the spoil board. And the first thing I need to do is remove the temporary spoil board that I placed on the machine when I first built it. So with the temporary spoil board removed, I have now just positioned one of the sections on top of the machine in the exact same manner as the temporary one was. So you could actually just fix these down to the supports that are already in the machine for the spoil board and you can still have your three sections of spoil board on the machine just fixed down to the extrusion uh, that came with the machine. But like I said at the start of the video, I want to do things a little bit different. But I want to increase the Z working height of the machine. Now it's not that I'm going to be wanting to cut through thick material, but I do want to be able to surface or flatten a thicker material than what this will allow me to. When I have a surfacing bit set up in the machine, it'll give me enough room to be able to surface easily 60 millimeters. But if I wanted to machine something that was 70 millimeters, I can't. So when I was actually going to be going to do this, I decided I might as well try and increase my Z height. So I can increase it by 15 millimeters. So instead of being 60 mil, I can increase it up to 75 mil. So to lower it that 15 mil, I'm actually going to be removing the extrusion that came on the machine to support the spoil board. 
Now, before you do that, if you're thinking about doing that, make sure that you have the machine fixed down on the front and back extrusion. They are not going to be moved, but make sure you have the machine fixed down. I have three fixings on the front and three fixings on the back. So that once I remove these, the machine is still staying square and is still structurally sound. So with that said, I can now go ahead and I can remove those four pieces of extrusion. So with the extrusion removed, I need to replace those again with something. So I actually have cut some 25mm MDF. I have cut three strips 70mm wide and I have cut one strip 50mm wide. Now these are cut the same length as the spoil board, which is 1370 and I'm going to be running them across the machine. So to set these out on the machine, instead of trying to measure each one individually, I set up a measuring stick and I have drawn in the slip that's going to hold down the spoil board, then I've allowed for the width of the spoil board the whole way across and I have marked in the sections of MDF that I'm going to be fixing down. So all I need to do is lay that on the machine, hold it up again, the front extrusion, and I can now mark that on to the top of the bench so that I can line up these in line with the marks on the stick so that I know exactly where I want them. And I'll be putting them on, I'll again be spacing them off the side to keep them central on the machine. So now all I need to do is just screw all these in place. With those now screwed in place, I can finally start dropping in the sections of spoil board and the retaining slips, making sure that I keep it tight to the front of the machine, up to the ex inside of the extrusion on the front of the machine, and keeping the ends of the spoil board level with the ends of the pieces of MDF. And that'll ensure that when I put it in, it's going to be square to the machine and it's also going to be centered on the machine. So now I have them all in position and I have double checked to make sure that I'm square and I'm all set so now I can just add the screws into the slips that are going to hold everything in position. So that's the spoil board now screwed in place. The next thing I want to do is actually to run a surface and tool pad on this because even brand new MDF is going to have some little bit of distortion to it. So to make sure that I have a completely level surface, I'm going to run a surface and tool pad on the top of the spoil board. Now I'm going to be using the center of the spoil board as my XYZ datum point. So I'm going to set up for that now and then we'll let it run and surface the top of the spoil board.
So that is the spoil board now surfaced. I took a pass 0.25 of a millimeter and it actually clean up every part of the spoil board. There was two little high spots in one part, but other than that, it all clean up with a quarter of a millimeter of a pass. So that just shows that the bench that I put the CA on C on is actually pretty level. So the last thing I want to do to this to add to it now is grid lines in each of the sections which will help me align projects on the CNC. So like I said at the start, if you're interested in how I done the design for the T-nuts or the surface and tool pad or for now for the grid lines that I'm going to be doing, I will have a separate video on how I designed that in Vetric and once I have that up, I will link it in the description of this video. So if you're interested in that end of it, there is a video coming. So now I am set up, all I need to do is run the grid lines in this. So that's the spoil board now completed. So hopefully as the video went on, what I said at the start of the video has now made a little bit more sense. I have been able to place a spoil board on the machine out of a four foot sheet, where normally you'd have to buy a five foot sheet. I have it in sections so that if one section gets damaged, I can either interchange it with the other, one of the other two, or if I need to, I only have to have a smaller piece to replace it with, not having to get a full sheet and do the whole lot all over again. And one thing I didn't mention at the start of the video, another reason why I wanted to do this, is because the front section here, I want to be able to remove that for another thing, but I'll cover that in another video. I'm sure some of you can guess what I'm going to be doing. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed following along on the journey of me building my spoil board for my CNC. And if you like this video, maybe you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, maybe you consider subscribing to the channel. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.